Anavasi story in short, we were founded in 2020 as part of the whole COVID um, era with technology out of the University of Washington. We use reverse transcriptase, loop-mediated isothermal amplification, also known as RT-LAMP, to diagnose the presence of RNA, whatever our target is. We focus on sexual health and respiratory. We are generating revenue today. Last year, 375,000. This year, we target 1.6 million. We have two assays prepared for clinical trial this fall, a multiplex flu COVID, and separately, a strep A molecular. We also have early indications from the FDA that a assay in development for sexually transmitted disease is likely to achieve a breakthrough status when it comes out. We have raised $35 million to date, primarily in seed funding, 15 million of that from the NIH, and we're seeking to raise 20 million more. The problem, as we all know, has been that point-of-care diagnostics has been the tip of the spear. It's where people want accurate information, and if anything, the pandemic showed us that that is lacking. That creates a real delay in treatment, it increases the cost of diagnosis, and it helps perpetuate, we think, healthcare inequity. As a result, we bring a point-of-care device. I can hold it in my hand, it weighs about five ounces, and it has all the capabilities of a PCR device that you would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for a high complexity lab. This detector can do real-time LED fluorescence against our targets. The form factor, as I said, is low. The nice thing is it's inexpensive and it can be used up to 5,000 times. It is not a disposable. It adds to the fact that we have a very strong chemistry background. People think about RT lamp, the historical concern has been you can't multiplex. We disproved that with our very first assay, in which we multiplexed SARS CoV 2. As you can see, that illustration is of the N gene or nucleocapsid uh, gene for SARS. We had three targets on it, which meant something really critical. We were multiplexed from day one. Importantly, as you can see up here, we also had target redundancy so that as it developed, mutated, and evolved, we were able to actually detect every variant that we encountered. We have superior sample artifact minimization, which means that we don't get a lot of interference from other substances that you're going to find in your samples. Importantly, the chemistry also builds on a proprietary polymerase. Why is that critical? It enables us to develop predictably, rapidly, and with a high degree of confidence that we will turn out the product that we want. This multiplex approach actually with Rosalind, which is used by NIH to gauge different um, assays, we showed that we were 99.97% effective in detecting every known variant of SARS-CoV-2 in their database. Rosalind has over 3,800 different genetic sequences. And our RT LAMP approach has actually proven itself to be as accurate up to a CT equivalent against a highly complex $250,000 piece of equipment running a $125 assay. We were up to 36.7, uh, 95% agreement. We ended up with a PPA of 89.2. So what makes us different? What is the real value that we bring? I've already mentioned that our speed is there. In our clinical trial, we got positives in approximately 17 minutes, negatives a little bit longer because our internal control was against our negative um, uh, fluorescence. Our size, I can hold this in the palm of my hand. It's five ounces. It contains 61 parts. It can be assembled very inexpensively. The cost for this is low compared to others where we compete at the point of care. The lowest cost uh, device that we know of is about $8,500 and comes with a contract that requires that you buy a minimum number of tests every month. We have low waste, high accuracy, and dependability we think is critical. Less than a 1.5% malfunction rate or inconclusive rate in our clinical trial compared to products that are in the market today that would go between 5 and 20% uh, equivalent. So where are we going? We think that's what's critical. We have two key focus areas, as I mentioned, in respiratory and sexual health. We have a multiplex flu COVID 
uh, assay and a strep A assay that will go into clinical trial this fall. We can also extend that into other areas, as you can see, including tuberculosis. In sexual health, we see the best opportunity for future growth because of the booming size of that market. We're focusing right now, thanks to two leading academics that came to us asking to prepare an assay on this platform with a syphilis HSV-1, HSV-2 test that we think will provide primary diagnosis of an active infection. That is a huge savings compared to the two-step diagnosis that is required today for syphilis. Gonorrhea, uh, trick, as well as uh, chlamydia will be a future one. On top of that, we also have developed a test for monkeypox that is already in the bag, ready to go when it is needed. We have great IP. We already have five patents uh, already filed. We have two more that are in process based upon a new design for our device. And we also know that with each assay, we have the opportunity to file two more to provide more of an IP moat around our core technology. The NAIH backed us through the RADx program with about 15.3 million in non-dilutive uh, funding. And currently we have submissions in front of BARDA, um, CDC, and the NIH for up to $80 million more in funding. As I said, we're commercial. Henry Schein and Medline are our two largest national distributors. Because of our focus on the point of care, we also use regional and vertically focused distributors, regional Atlantic medical systems, and vertically focused folks that are focusing on pharmacy, like RX Rise and Clio Waved. Our market penetration strategy is fairly straightforward. We go after the point of care. The majority of testing is being done at urgent cares, in emergency rooms, as well as in primary care, large primary care physician offices. Workplace screening has been important for us. As you can see on the right side, Premise Health is one of our largest customers. That puts us into the medical centers at every Goldman Sachs office as well as the newest customer that just picked us up, MasterCard. We have other healthcare-focused customers like Signature Health, and Icon, which is a well-known CRO, uses us to screen all of their incoming patients or subjects that are gonna participate in clinical trials. We think this is a significant opportunity. If you look at the global market today, just for flu, COVID, strep A, syphilis, and CTNG, that's a $100 billion market. The serviceable market that we see here just in the US, and we focus that just in the US because there are a variety of different tests, we think is about an $18 billion market. And for us, we think a $220 million opportunity. As I said, we completed about 1.6 million, we think this coming year, um, with our SARS-CoV-2 product. Fiscal year 2025, we anticipate launch of two new products, which will accelerate our revenue, and we expect to be EBITDA positive in 2026 behind that. We also have three clinical trials that we will be running in 2026. Our management team is deep and experienced and brings a lot of complementary skills. On here, you can see uh, our co-founders across the top, and then we have a wide bench. We have a very nice outside board as well, including the sector leader for medical device at Corn Ferry, one of the leading hardware developers at Illumina. So again, we're seeking $20 million in Series A funding, primarily to fund our clinical trials and our R&D development. Thank you.